You're listening to Science and Spirituality with Deepak Chopra. Hello, my friends. Uh, I have the distinct pleasure and privilege of uh, having a conversation with Julian Lennon this morning. And uh, I'm really looking forward to sharing this conversation globally with all of you. And uh, I met Julian recently in England, in uh, London. He lives in uh, Monaco, I think now. Are you there, Monaco, in Monaco right now? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. Brilliant. Yeah, although we've got the weather, we've got the weather from England yeah, right I now. See. So that's um. okay. <laughs> so you know, uh, your history is easily available on the internet. Everybody can read about it, as did I. But share right. a few thoughts with you, just my memories, and then I want to ask you some questions and uh, especially share with our audience your current projects but uh, let me give you a little bit of background about myself and my connection to your world so you know i was 17 years old when i entered medical school and when i was about um, oh, ready to graduate uh, in the year 1969 is when the Beatles were in Rishikesh with Maharishi Mahesh Yogi. I was not familiar with uh, meditation at that moment, but uh, in medical school in India, the medical school was somehow yeah. affiliated with, uh, with uh, Harvard and other international institutions. I, at the age of uh, 18 or 19, uh, was part of an experiment, which was a controlled experiment on LSD. And I experienced, you know, what I call non-local reality. And then, you know, Sergeant <laughs> Peppers came out the same year as I was having my <laughs> LSD experiences. Uh, yes, okay. Fast forward to 1980, mm when I was in the US and I was actually going back to India on a vacation and I was at the airport and I saw the news of your father's assassination. And mm -hmm. I can share with you right now that I remember the exact moment and how my heart, uh, you know, felt the anguish of, uh, of the world losing uh, a genius. Uh, and I know your relationship with him has been chaotic and also beautiful at the same time. But um, that was my first, uh, you know, experience of immense sorrow. And then many years later, I wrote a book called Quantum Healing. And out of the blue, I got a call from George Harrison, who, who wanted to meet me right. and um, actually came to to uh, Boston, where I was living at that time. And we became very, very close friends. You know, Olivia, John, and Danny was just a little kid at that moment. And yeah. We traveled all over India together. I got to know Danny and Olivia and George. And then, of course, you know, George passed away also. I only recently yeah. met James McCartney. I know Danny very well. I met Stella recently, and we started a program together for for mental well being, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So, bottom line, I have uh, I have some kind of link to you and your family. you know us all. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know us all more than we know so ourselves. <laughs> I'd start to I like to start this conversation with just one question. Uh, of yeah. course, as I said, your life is public it's on the internet anyone can check it out but i'd like to start to with a degree the yes. one uh, question what are some of the most happiest of memories that you have in your entire life including your childhood and what are some of the most tragic memories you know because that's who we are a bundle of memories of course of course, and, and how we handled all of that as well, of course. Um, 
Now, uh, probably let's start with the tragic <laughs> and then move forward with the positive. Um, obviously, uh, you know, uh, as, as, as it's public knowledge, and I think m most people um, have a good understanding that when, you know, um, dad fell in love with Yoko, he, you know, he moved out and it was just my mother and I for years on our own, you know, we, uh, uh, she had several jobs and, um, um, we had enough money to put me through school and clothes and food. But, um, so the, I mean, she was the be all and everything to me for me. And sadly I, you know, lost her in physical form anyway, you know, seven years ago. And, um, and that was the that was the toughest by by far the most difficult uh feeling and of of loss and sadness and confusion um i knew it was coming though but um i i was still hopeful you know that uh, there may be a way through it you know we always hope that there's there's possibilities um sadly there wasn't and so you know, one thing that was important for me that I've always taken from her is that she's always been under under fire or under any circumstances. She's always been she'd always been very gracious and never aggressive and never really a hard word about anybody, no matter what she'd been through. And I think that was one of the main things that I took away from her and her life. Um, I, I think, secondly, I know dad's important and everybody expects me to say that, you know, maybe dad should be next on the list. But actually, I, I was very much in love with my grandmother as well, uh, as she was a major, my mother's mother, who was a major, major part of Your my name life. Your name after her. Uh, to, Your name after her. To, uh, no, 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 not that. My mother's grandmother, which was oh. Lillian, uh, Lillian Powell. Uh, Julia was dad's mother. Um, but it, yeah, I guess one of the main, not, I, I, I can't say it's a regret, but a, a certain sadness to it is that, is that, um, that my grandfather from on my mother's side passed away before I, uh, I got to meet him. Uh, my grandmother, uh, dad's mother, you know, she passed away. So I never got to meet her too. So there's there's an emptiness there and there's a longing there to a certain degree because I always love that kind of sense of family, you know, that community, uh, that feeling. And my life was so very disjointed in that regard. Um, but, um, you know, certainly dad was a huge... Uh, part and influence and his loss obviously tragic and and it affected me immensely of course um primarily because i was really i was just getting to know him again as a as a as a as a teen as an adult and uh, we started having you know decent conversations about life on the on on the phone uh in my early to mid teens um so that was that 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 was beyond a doubt tragic, and there's been lots of dear dear friends and, and other uh, relatives that have just passed so early in their lives, and that for me I think has been the saddest point is is not really getting to know these people deeper and further and more of their history, and um, because there's you know there's. Uh, there's only so much that I, you know, we all think, in fact, I, I, you know, I would, it's now, of course, that I would love to be able to ask my mother or my father any of the questions about life and what, what they went through and how they felt and all of these things. And certainly I can, you know, I have some memories, um, but I've always had a pretty bad memory. So, um, the next thing I can rely on is obviously, um, you know, the written word, basically, you know, so uh, there are some things, but there's, you, you know, there's always questions that you want answered, but 
unfortunately, until maybe the next realm, or if we all meet again, then, you know, I, I, I'll get to understand a little deeper and a little further. Um, moving on to the sort of more uh, pleasant things in life. What, one of the things that I've, I've said that was one of the most memorable, the most joyous and the most peaceful moments uh, in, in my life was actually when I was in uh, South America. Uh, I was in Colombia. And uh, on behalf of my foundation, the White Feather Foundation, we were working with another organization called the Amazon Conservation Team. And we were trying to help the Koji down there um, uh, buy back their land, you know. Um, and so we were on a visit for a few days, <clears throat> excuse me, up in the Sierra Nevada. And uh, at the end of the, the two or three days, we all uh, came down to the waterfront, uh, which is was their original land before the Spanish came uh, 400 years ago and, uh, you know, tried to get rid of everybody. <laughs> but, so they ran into the hills for protection. But they were, they were fishermen originally. And, you know, uh, we, uh, we had to... I, well, the group heard some amazing stories about their past and their, their beliefs and their history and uh, so on. But there was a moment at the end of the last day in South America and Colombia with them. And we were literally sitting on a, an absolutely empty beach. Maybe there was one or two people you could see in the distance a mile or two away. But the sun was setting and... It was just me and the Koji, and we were just sitting on the beach um, with, a, with a fire in front of us, and then the sea, and the sun was setting um, slightly uh, behind us. And it was just, there was no phones, no computers, no nothing. It was just, I mean, we couldn't even, I, you know, I, we couldn't speak, we couldn't communicate you know, in the traditional sense of, of, of language, um, only by purely by gesture and expression. And we, we, we all sat there on, on these little chairs or there were some logs around the fire and uh, the sun went down. Uh, all you could hear is the waves and the wind and the rustling of the wind in the, in the palms. And this, then this, because there was no, you know, uh, electric lights there, all the stars really came out at night. I mean, it was, it was the crossover between uh, that and the evening was, was so, so beautiful. And probably one of the first times that I'd really seen nature at its, at its best from that transition from day to night. But we... The Koji tried, there was about three or four of the, them sitting to the side of me. And there was a moment where we just, we just looked at each other with nothing but love in our hearts. And, and we just smiled and, and nodded. And I, I, and I thought about nothing else, just except being there in the present moment with them. And I have to say that was, I was just overwhelmed by the simplicity and the beauty of that moment in time. And it's stuck with me ever since. It's a, it's a, it's a very, very fond memory and one I cherish immensely uh, because it's, 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 a, it's a place I carry with me. Um, so although I'd like to physically go back and experience that again, obviously it would never be quite the same, but it's that kind of place in my heart that uh, we did a ceremony too, which was a, quite amazing where we, that we were in a big circle with everybody that was there and there was a center stone piece, a number of stones. And they just said to everybody, one by one, you know, just go to the center. Think of all the evil, all the hurt, all the pain that you've ever felt or witnessed in your life. And, and let it let it go, let it go, let it flow, let it get out of your system, and then 
The other thing, well, and whenever I remember this, it brings joy and a smile to my face because it really did have a profound effect. And they said, okay, now, now just put all of the love that you feel, that you've ever felt, that you want to give to the world, out into the world. And people were crying all over the place. It was, you know, uh, but it was it was such a release and such beauty. And all you wanted to do was basically hug everybody and save the world. <laughs> you know, yeah, obviously starting locally and hopefully eventually reaching, uh, you know, the masses uh, to try and you know, for to have a positive influence and a positive movement in the world. That's partly why I started White Feather Foundation, uh, to 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 slowly but surely make a change in in whatever way I could. So uh, that I would have to say is one of the predominantly is probably number one on the list. Um, obviously, other times uh, of joy would have been. Well, I do remember growing up and there being a few moments with dad uh, that I recall, uh, you know, simple things like being a child on a rooftop of a sun, sunroof's room, building a balsamic wooden plane with a rubber band and a propeller and flying it off into the sunset. You know, just simple moments that are very clear in my head, but bizarrely from a third person perspective, not from mine, which... I've had a lot of experiences like that where I'm not seeing it from my perspective. So moments in time, like this weird photographic memory uh, of, of moments of, of hurt and pain and suffering, but also of, of happiness and joy. Um, you know, I, the other times that I've, uh, I've felt that kind of simplicity uh, would be, would actually be set on a sailing boat. Um, uh, to me, that's it's 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 breathing that fresh air in. It's being again at one with nature in some capacity. And the other other time, really, which is partly the reason I got into phot photography too, is when you're on these long haul airplane flights that we have to do so often. More often than not. You know, most people would be asleep um, on, 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 on most of these long haul flights. Me, I'm staring out the window. I'm watching the clouds, uh, you know, at sunrise and sunset. And that those particular moments, which is why I started taking photographs of clouds predominantly, uh, was because it was either a moment of full-on contemplation about who we are, where we are, what are we doing, where am I at, what does this all mean? Or it's, <laughs> or it's just that moment of, you know, just thinking of nothing, but just being in that moment of, of, of seeing, seeing, again, such beauty in front of you and just going, that moment only lasts once. Everything only lasts once for a split second and it's gone. Uh, nothing can be recreated ever. It just can't. It's a, it's a fact. So um, I know that we 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 cherish and we try we strive to to capture those moments and those feelings again, and they're fleeting. You know, they really are. They feel fleeting. But um, yeah, I, I you know the reality is uh, I think moments like that and you know being having amazing and close friends and people around you obviously and obviously if you have family uh you know it, it, we all seem to learn just a little too late <laughs> um you, you know which is which is which is sad but it's but it's okay because at least we're learning um and we hope to pass that on you know uh not to waste time you know as such to uh to love and live and be in the moment. Huh? You've been listening to reflections from Julian Lennon. And as I listen to you, Julian, uh, what you're describing, I feel, is a longing we all have, um, whether we call it a religious experience, a spiritual experience, 
yeah. uh, experience of uh, cosmic consciousness. Uh, it doesn't matter what the label is, but it is also a feeling of immense love uh, because uh, when we say non-duality and all these philosophical and religious terms, it sounds kind of almost unreachable. But when we say love, yeah. I think everyone understands. And what you just described is a love for existence more than anything else. You Very know, true. Love for existence. And we are part of that existence. Um, you know, as you were speaking, I also recall that there are at least three very famous Beatles songs that are inspired <laughs> by you, in a sense, about you. Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds, Hey yeah. Jude. There's a third one, right? Uh, I, yeah, Good Night, I think, was Good the other night. one. Yeah, um, they're, they're all, uh, um, you know, if, John, if Julian Lennon hadn't existed, those songs wouldn't have been there. So that's a one way to think about it. <laughs> And, you yeah. know, chaos and creativity and suffering and happiness go together. There are complementarities. You can't have one without the other. Indeed. So thank you for sharing that uh, so eloquently. Um, right now, your main passion seems to be the White Feather Foundation. So uh, let's talk about that and then about a few of the other things that you're doing. True. Sure. Do you, do you want me to explain the story? Because uh, yes, I, I, I did briefly to you. Yeah, um, I yeah, do. So uh, it all started. Um, uh, I, I was. I, I had. I had a. I'd. Uh, I had a song called "Salt Water," um, which was, uh, you know, uh, environmentally and. Uh, orientated and uh, obviously dealt with humanity as well. Um, and uh, it, it was number one in Australia uh, and top 10 around the world, except for America, I think. It didn't really get released We're properly behind. there. Yeah. Uh, and so um, I, was, I was in Australia doing some a lot of promotional work and playing live. And, and I, I'd, I'd arrived at this... Um, uh, this place called, uh, well, Adelaide. I was in Adelaide in a hotel and I, I was summoned uh, downstairs by the hotel uh, saying, uh, excuse me, Mr. Lennon, um, uh, there's um, an Aboriginal tribe down here and some news crews. And I, I, I said, yeah, sure. Okay. I thought it was one of those pranks that people play when you're on the road. And so... <laughs> So I didn't think about it. And then they called up and they said, no, no, uh, th this is very serious. Please, you know, there's, uh, there's a number of people down here, Aboriginal tribes uh, uh, and news crews, and they, um, they really want to see you. Um, so I kind of got a little dressed up, came down in the elevator. The elevator opened and on a sort of semicircular platform were all these people. And uh, I, I was a bit taken aback and quite shy and uh, a little anxious about this. I didn't know what it was about, obviously. And I, 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 there was a friend of mine that I know had been working with some of the indigenous tribes, the Murning people in, in particular, um, who had lost their land and a number of other things, of course, uh, in life uh, to the government and you name it, all the issues that they've gone through. Anyway, they... My friend brought me onto this plinth and said, um, you know, Julian, this is... Uh, and this lady uh, uh, walked up to me, Iris. She was the, the elder, the, the boss of the Murning uh, tribe. And in the middle of this sort of semicircle, she walked up to me with a male swan's white, uh, white feather, about T.A. big. And she said, she said, can you help us? You know, you have a voice. Um, and I, 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 in my head, I was thinking, well, you know, what is this? What does this all mean? And I thought, well, do, do I just continue being a rock and roller or, or do I step up to the plate and do something? I didn't know the background or the history of these people, but I, 
I, I, I learned very quickly. Um, and I, I said, yeah, of course, I, I, I'll, do, I'll do it for the children. I'll do it for, uh, for all of them. And um, the weird and eerie uh, thing about this whole scenario, because the moment she handed me the white feather, uh, I just got goosebumps because dad had told me, and I couldn't tell you, where or when or how old I was, but it was something he said to me that I thought was very weird and very peculiar and, and didn't grasp at the time. He said, he said, listen, if, if something ever happens to me, um, I, the way in which I'll let you know that, you're, that I'm going to be okay, uh, that we're all going to be okay, will be in the form of a, 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 of a white feather. And so when I received the white feather, I just kind of flipped a little bit inside. And so I thought, okay, that's a calling. Uh, that's a, I'm sorry, but in my world, that's undeniable. Undeniable. So I spent the next 10 years making a documentary about these people uh, with my friend, the, the, the director, Kim Kindersley. And we... And, you know, we'd, we'd had meetings with, there was another film that he'd been putting together called The Gathering, where 80 elders from around the world, from uh, indigenous tribes, had, had come together around a fireplace. And although, again, they couldn't communicate directly, they were sharing their stories of the, the troubles and the difficulties and the pain and suffering that they'd been going through for decades if not centuries if not far more than that and and it really hit me and w so we made this documentary about the mourning in principle but was inclusive of all the others uh, uh, that we were dealing with all the other indigenous tribes and it was called whale dreamers where the whale was the totem of the um, the mourning people and um, I just thought and we won, uh, you know, we didn't have any money to really promote it, but we <laughs> we were able to show it in one of the smallest rooms in Cannes at the festival. And we won, I think, about eight little sort of independent film awards. And we were happy with that. And I'm thinking, well, you know, okay, this is, this is reaching people. It's touching people. Uh, and then it was kind of the advent of the internet and how that was coming along and websites. And I thought, well... Let's let's put a, a website together so you know we can promote the film and any anybody can donate towards uh, this and 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 the idea of the foundation really was at the time because I thought well if the film's going to make any money how do I want to give it whatever I can back to the indigenous um, and the only way legally to do it uh, back then was through a Foundation. Hence, uh, uh, the White Feather Foundation. Um, and again, it started as a um, uh, 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 the, the the website was a uh, was like a shop front really to sell the documentary to to try and raise donations for them as well. And uh, then you know. Uh, uh, so we were we weren't really a foundation at that point. It was just a you know a way of uh, of passing the money through to help and uh, you know vehicles so to speak. And um, you know uh, eventually people started writing to me going, well you know can you help us with this problem and can you help us with this problem? And I was, I was going, well I'm not really a foundation. I said I'm just you know I did my thing, isn't that? And then there were, you know, there was, a, you know, I started hearing other horrendous stories and uh, and um, so I started uh, uh, delving and, you know, trying to, uh, well, I was trying to read everything that was being sent to me, but I wanted to, I, I thought if I'm going to, if I'm going to make this a real foundation, I need to follow my heart on this and I need to, focus on the things that I feel uh, empathetic about and passionate about in that realm. Um, and so, you know, I was fortunate enough to uh, 
work with an organization called the Charity Water, who are amazing. Scott Harrison and his wife and his team, uh, just astonishing. And so we did a couple of campaigns. So we deal with clean water campaigns. And, uh, you know, we were in uh, Ethiopia at the time. That was an amazing experience for me. Truly, truly amazing experience. Uh, we, we, we've, we you know, I was in Kenya as well. And of course, South America. The camera with, was with me in tow all the time so I could tell the stories. Um, and so that I could remember everything. Um, the the other elements that we deal with are you know health and education, and then I put a scholarship together when my mum passed, Cynthia, when she passed away. I thought, you know, I'd love to have something that people can remember her by if they don't really know her from the past, because not everybody knows all the stories, you know, or, or who was married to who and when, where, and so just because I thought that she deserved the grace that she'd lived her life in. I, I I set up a scholarship in her name through the White Feather Foundation. So, you know, initially we started helping girls get through in in Ethiopia and Kenya and, uh, uh, and around the world too now. You know, um, uh, we help them with health and education to get them through uh, colleges and universities because... The stories that I heard at that time were that uh, when I when I went to the schools and health clinics was that we just want to be educated so that we can come back here and protect our people and the people that we love and the, the villages and the towns that we love and where where we come from and so that was part and parcel of you know that kind of fitted into the whole protection of indigenous uh, cultures which is. Uh, and their land, which is part of the other thing that, uh, uh, again, that uh, White Feather Foundation does uh, around the world, uh, thankfully with a lot of great NGOs. Uh, it's about su supporting the NGOs that we love and believe in and know that make uh, absolute change. Because, I mean, the reality is the White Feather Found Foundation for twenty, for uh, a good number of years, was just me and one other person. So, so you know, it's uh, we've never been a big foundation, and we've survived on donations, you know, uh, from the public. So, and it, it's been amazing. So, we, we survive, we trickle on, and I think one of the main thing is, you know, a lot of um, the people and situations get left behind. You know, with all with all the bigger charities, a lot of people uh, slip through the cracks. Um, so we kind of pick up the pieces a little bit um, of the people that get left behind, and and I'm quite happy being in that spot and helping people in that way uh, um, on a more personal level, I guess. Uh, really, um, I, I you know I don't know if White Feather Found the White Feather Foundation will ever become one of those, I, d I don't know if that's really me. Um, it's, it's, you know, that's a different thing, the galas and everything else. I mean, we did one gala many, many moons ago, but it was, you know, the organization alone of putting something like that together. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, it's time, money and effort. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, it was a unique experience, but, uh, I, you know, again, I, I, I'm, I'm quite quiet, quite humble. I just want to do what I can when I can. Um, My very and, special and guest today is uh, Julian Lennon. He's an entrepreneur. He's a musician. He's a songwriter. He's a film producer, film director. He is... Uh, um, uh, play, I say, uh, involved in many uh, philanthropies. He's a philanthropist. Um, you can look him up and uh, we will put some of the links here. Julian, as I speak to you, you know, yes. uh, it seems to me that you have these traits of uh, compassion and empathy and uh, yeah. love that. Uh, uh, must have come from your mother 
uh, <laughs> it seems that 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 part of you is very much your mother but yet the creative part of you is also your father you know the chaotic create creative well part I'll, is I'll, also I'll your tell, well listen listen they both met at art school so they were both creative you know oh. but um I, I think the best quote that I ever heard about me, uh, I, I'm not sure if it was my mother who actually said it, but I think it was, in fact. Um, she said, Julian is like me in the week and like his father on the weekends. That's brilliant. That's brilliant. <laughs> so so you know, that, that used to be very true, but uh, I've, really. I've calmed down a little bit. <laughs> you also had a film that you executive produced called Kiss the yeah. Ground. I think I was indirectly involved in that film, uh, met some of the, the people who were um, yeah. filming that. And you, of course, are very well known for your photography. What are your current projects right now and I know you've been on on tour recently well no I mean I, I, I was well not tour as such I was more of a um uh well uh well I, you know I, I released an album this time last year so there was a lot of promotion with that no no live performances but uh you know I I think I'll probably get around to that at some point but I, you know, I do love being behind the camera. That's my favorite place to be these days. So I can actually was, breathe. The album was called Jude, right? It was the album was called Jude. Yes, it was. Um, and it made up. It's, made it's up, done it took very five, well. It's it's well. It's I, but the response, I I think the 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 critics have been very kind to me. You know, it was an album that was put together over the course. It was a five-year project of songs from 30 years ago and new songs. Um, it came just, um, you know, the, 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 the project came together during the process of COVID. Um, and funnily enough, you know, I'd had this scenario where, um, you know, my first name originally was John. Correct. Um, you know, so... Um, uh, so you know the uh, the, the reason so you would have been calling... John Lennon Jr. if you had kept that. well, <laughs> if I'd have lived in America, yes, probably yes. no. But yes. um, so no, Mum used to you know to differentiate us when it was dinner time or tea time as a kid. You know, Mum would shout Julian. Uh, God, that sounded just like her. That was so weird. Uh, that was um, she was right with me then. That was so weird. Uh, but. Um, so anyway, I'd had all these, I, I, I know, uh, uh, first world problems, but I, I'd had all these scenarios, um, especially when security came in to full play, when, um, you know, you'd have to, uh, especially in America, uh, you, if you're going for meetings, if you're doing, you know, you'd go up to the front desk and they'd want to give you a sticker to go upstairs and it would always say John Lennon. And I'm going, uh, really, really? Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, and also at the airports with the boarding passes and the, and the passport, John Lennon, John, Le and I, you know, and there would always be smart quips and uh, uh, some very idiotic comments that followed me for many, many years. And in 2020, because I'd been going through this process of and finally deciding to call the album Jude, you know, uh, initially uh, from Ju Jules, which I mean, Paul's sto original story is that it was Hey Jules, and then uh, he just preferred sonically uh, Hey Jude. Um, mm -hmm. And I, and I, I thought, and I was going through many changes at that point in time. Through so it was, I mean, the 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 the. COVID, uh, the time out for COVID, for COVID was uh, quite a good thing for me, I, I think, because I, I turned inward and I wanted to find that place of peace and, and, uh, and calmness and balance and happiness. And, um, and so I decided just in 2020 to change my name by deep pole to Julian. So I didn't want to lose John. Uh, so I just switched John and Julian. So it's, it's instead of John Charles Julian, because Charles was my grandfather, my mother's father. So I just, instead of John Charles Julian, it's Julian Charles John Lennon. 
And so now with the passport and the boarding passes and the stickers, I, you know, I, I thought I'm finally Julian. I want. Yeah. I was. I was tired of being the second John, so to speak. Um, so I was finally. I was Julian. I was Jules. I was Jude, and I wanted to take ownership of that. You know, finally, I thought, God, I, you know, I, 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 I actually feel like me. <laughs> I, I can't explain that to you, really. But there was something in that. It was there was something in you know changing my name and calling the album Jude that was very very special. So um, you know I didn't think I was going to make another album again. I'm I'm happy that I did in the end. Uh, uh, you know it's it's out there. It's uh, I I think it's a good example of what I can do uh, as a as a songwriter because I. Rather than a performer, I feel much more at home, again, behind the scenes, you know, writing and recording and producing. Um, going back to uh, um, Kiss the Ground, you know, the which was an amazing film that's now become a platform worldwide. Um, you know, there's a, there's a part two out right now called uh, 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 Common Ground, sorry. Uh, um, and... Uh, I I guess you could say that it's a little more of a, it's a little more of an intimate look. Um, it, it reflects on the first film in the way that it shows you how um, uh, how uh, uh, <laughs> sorry it's, it's yeah it's late in the day already. Um, <laughs> um, regenerative. It, 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 it sh- yes, regenerative uh, farming. It just shows you literally how how really great it really is doing traditional farming in that regard uh, compared to the mass factory farming that goes on these days but the but with common ground it's more of a personal take because you know it's it's out in theaters all over the uh, US right now yeah. um, small screenings all over the place and it starts off on a personal note with a few well-known celebrities that you would all know, Laura Dern and Jason Momoa and a number of others, writing a note to their children about the future. And so it really, you know, takes on a heart-wrenching perspective. Um, So the first film was, I think, an overall overview of of America predominantly. Um, This one's more about a personal uh, position and thoughts and how things have progressed, and I think that well, I think there's a, a third one in the pipeline, which is uh, an overview of the world situation. You know, um, so you know, fingers crossed that th- that will impact as well as the first film, and hopefully the third, uh, if that truly comes about, which uh, I will try and help that as much as possible, you know, uh, we'll, uh, we'll make a change for good. You know? So Julian, we're coming towards the end of our uh, um, conversation because of the limitations on social media, but before... And, and I talk too much, so I okay, apologize. You said some wonderful <laughs> things. And uh, before we finish, yeah. I have a question and also a reflection. And okay. Something- that I want to share with you. So, you know, I entered my 77th year. Uh, you look fabulous, darling. You do. Yeah, <laughs> you look very fabulous. well. And coincidentally, I had lunch with Laura Dern the day before yesterday in New York. Oh, okay. So, okay. Another coincidence. But here's a, a practice that I do, which I've found very useful. Okay. Um, and it's a kind of a reflective meditation, but I want to share it with you because um, I think you might find it useful too. So before okay. I sleep at night, what I do is, and you know, the reason I'm sharing this with you right now, is you said, no moment will ever be recreated. Every moment is unique and you know, which is so true. So what I do at night before I go to sleep is, I recapitulate my day, you know, in my imagination, on my mind, in my consciousness. Yes. 
I got up, I went to the bathroom, I meditated, I did yoga, I met so-and-so, this, that, the other. And, you know, then I tell myself, today was a dream, it's over, you know, and uh, uh, I let it go. But then I go through another practice and I recapitulate my life, which you did for me just now, your life, okay? where I see my childhood, my parents, my mother, my father, my schoolmates, etc. And of course, all that is also a dream. But as I, as I drift into sleep, I ask these dream characters, particularly my parents who've been dece deceased, if they would answer my questions in the middle of the night in my dream world. And I've started to have a very intense relationship with my parents who've been long gone and now exist only in the dream world, knowing that the world we're living in right now is also a dream world. Every day is a dream. You know, if I asked you what happened to your childhood, you'd say it's a dream. But what about yesterday? It's a dream. What about this morning? It's a dream. What about five minutes yeah. ago? It's a dream. Absolutely. By the time you hear these words, they don't exist. So we're all kind of, Wittgenstein said, our life is a dream. We're asleep, but once in a while, we wake up enough to know that we're dreaming. And so I'm sharing this <laughs> yeah. with you yes. in case you want to communicate with, with your parents. You can do that even now, as I do. Okay. And that's a technique. But um, I wanted to share with you because you brought this up. But my question, and you know, for our for our viewers and um, and those who are listening to this um, conversation, uh, please check out all the links you'll see below this conversation, including uh, links to um, uh, Julian's um, philanthropy, his other projects, his photography. Everything will be there, and that's easy for you to look Thank up. You. But before I let uh, let you go, Julian. Um, and I hope to see you again. By the way, I'm coming again to England. Absolutely. To the Oxford Union for a, for a conversation at Oxford Union. So maybe I'll run into you or I'll come and see you sometime in Monaco. You travel all over the world. But, uh, yeah, uh, I do. <laughs> but uh, before I let you go, um, yes. what is your vision for yourself for the, for the next, uh, say, uh, you know, decades, dec few decades of your life? What is your vision for yourself and for humanity at large? We're living in very troubled times right now with uh, what's happening in the Middle East, what's happening in Ukraine, what's happening everywhere. Yeah, yeah. yeah. What is, um, you know, your father wrote Imagine. I'm yeah. asking you now, what are you imagining? Um, well, bizarrely, uh, I, I would have to say, uh, uh, and this is more on a, initially a personal level um you know uh, 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 again i've you know I, i've written songs and sang songs and even sang imagine you know for ukraine uh, and um and uh, so i've I, 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 i've i've put the love out there through music and i've and i've certainly uh, doing that through through uh, the documentary work as well and of course uh, you know i i i had new york times best selling children's books a trilogy no. uh, which which i loved and and so i you know a couple of years ago i tried to get those made into a little animated series to to get that out into the world and and uh not one one of the major companies was interested. Nobody. And then, <clears throat> funnily enough, uh, literally just a, a few weeks ago, I got a, uh, a. I had a meeting. Actually, the initial meeting was when we met. Um, there was a, a, a little film company called Compassionate Films. Oh yes, out of the, U out of the UK. Yes, we, we, yes. Well, exactly. And they said they said to me, "Listen, you know." Uh, We'd love to bring this the children's books to light in an animated way, uh, and so that is now happening. So that's beautiful. Um, the the I'm I, I guess with them own, as well, by the way. <laughs> but, they're lovely people, yeah, fabulous people. people yeah. um, and um, 
I, for me, you know, there's been, a, I'd have to say there's been a lot of admin in life, uh, which tends to block a lot of the creativity. You know, you get really stuck behind the numbers and the words sometimes. Um, what my goal this year has predominantly been is to get the admin organized so well that next year I begin a year of nothing but creativity on every level. And that will, of course, be inclusive of, of spreading, you know, as much love as I can um, and helping as much as I can through whatever medium uh, uh, is presented, really. Um, you know, I, I think I've covered a lot of ground already, but I'm still open to more. So, you know, uh, I, I think that's mainly the thing from my perspective um, is helping from personal level, but if the personal can also feed into the media and into uh, uh, a bigger resolution, then 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 that's that's my that's my goal. So you know, it, what what well, better way than to work with children or you know bring the message through children? Absolutely, because as we as the time old saying is, you know, they are our future. So um that's 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 it that's those are my goals i that's big enough for me to deal with that's for sure my very special guest uh today has been julian lennon check out our conversation and uh, give us your feedback thank you so much julian for joining me my my absolute pleasure and hope to see you again soon thanks for listening if you enjoyed this episode please subscribe comment and share you can also visit DeepakShelper.com for upcoming events, news, and books.